Hey guys, so I'm going to show you how I make my homemade granola. I'm doing this all on my iPhone, so I hope that you can hear me. One of the great things about granola is that it's super, super, super forgiving. You can put all kinds of stuff into it and it'll usually turn out great. I've never had anything really go wrong with it unless you burn it in the oven. Usually there's not a lot that can go wrong with this recipe. You can adjust it how you feel. I'm just using what I had in my pantry, but you can add all kinds of different stuff to it, like I said. Your favorite kinds of nuts or seeds or flavors, different kinds of spices, it's totally up to you. This is just a very basic kind of generic recipe, I guess you can say, and a good base um, to get started. You can experiment with it however you like. Let's get started. For ingredients, the base is going to be quick oats, which is just what I have. You can use different kinds of oats, I'm sure, and that would work just fine as well, but this is what I have, so that's what I'm gonna use. And then this is just some chopped up walnuts. Here are some slivered shaved. I don't know, you know what I mean, almonds. I'm gonna use some chia seeds and some hemp hearts, some pumpkin seeds, some flax seeds. To bind everything together, you put some coconut oil and honey together and mix it all up. And then for spices, I'm just gonna use cinnamon and nutmeg. Again, you can mix up the spices however you like, but this is just what I like and that's what I'm going to use. As big as you want. Did I start this like that? I feel like I started it like this. Okay, let's try that. So you can make the batches kind of as big as you want. I've used as a base four cups of quick oats before and that's made a really big batch. Today I'm gonna do two cups and see how much that makes. I don't know. Actually, I think I'm gonna make three cups. Just doesn't look like enough. Okay, so now literally all you do is just add in all the stuff that you want in it. Some almonds and I just eyeball it like, again, it's not much of a recipe because you just kind of add as you like. If you like lots of almonds, add lots of almonds. If you don't like almonds, don't add that much almonds. Here's some of the walnuts, pumpkin seeds. Yeah, let's put a lot of pumpkin seeds in there. Almost done the bag, so whatever. A little bit of flax seeds, some hemp hearts. I don't really know what hemp hearts are, but they're apparently good for you, so let's throw them in there, why not? And then some chia seeds. That looks good enough. Isn't it pretty? All right, now I'm just gonna mix this up, all of the fun things making friends, and then we can kind of tell too then if we need to add any more not so seeds or whatever based on what it looks like all mixed together. So I'm gonna add a little bit more of almonds because, I don't know, this looks like I could use a little bit more volume. I'm just gonna add them all, whatever. And a little bit more of the flax seeds. Maybe a little bit more pumpkin seeds too. Where did they go? Oh, I have to open a new bag. A little bit more of those guys in there. They're so pretty. A little bit more size. Chia, size, chia. I don't know, you know what I mean. And if you wanted to add like dried cranberries or raisins to this or dried fruit or something like that too, I'm sure that would work out just fine. I don't have any of that stuff, so I'm not adding it. Okay, now comes the fun part of adding the spices. And again, just eyeballing it. I really like cinnamon, so I'm gonna add quite a lot because I just like it and it's delicious. I'm gonna add a little bit of nutmeg. Sure, that looks good. And then we're gonna mix that together too. A bit of cloves too, just for fun. Why not? Cloves smell good. Probably would taste good, I don't know. Sure, that looks good. Mix that up. Just to have a little bit of like, I don't know, flavor balance. I'm gonna add a little bit of salt. Not too much though, because we don't want it to be too salty. That would be no fun. Lots of mixing in this recipe. At least it's not too hard. So now that that's all mixed up sufficiently, I'm going to go to the fun part, which is adding the coconut oil and honey. Okay, so this is the coconut oil and honey that I'm gonna put in the microwave. I'm really not sure how much this is. Probably, I don't know, a couple tablespoons of each, maybe three or four. It depends how sweet you like it, how much honey you want to add. I like it pretty sweet because I have a sweet tooth. 
and so there's um, uh, you know a pretty pretty good amount of honey in there in terms of the oil again granola is super 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 forgiving so just kind of eyeball it and hope for the best oh i'm filming again <laughs> okay so this is what it looks like when it's melted um I guess a black hole wasn't exactly a, the best decision for this video because you can't see anything. But anyways, it's just honey and coconut oil melted together. It's really not that exciting. And now we take this delicious mixture of yumminess and just pour it in there. And then you mix it up and see what the consistency is like. This is all nice and evenly coated in the oil and honey that's kind of what you're looking for i guess if you find that like you still have quite a bit of dry spots then just melt some more oil and honey and put it in there when i first made granola i thought that everything had to kind of cluster together because that's what it looks like in a store but homemade granola is quite a bit more looser it might maybe stick together more if you had bigger flakes but these are quick oats so they're pretty tiny and they don't really stick too much together. And you get a couple little clumps when you bake it, but it's quite a bit looser than the granola that you buy in a store where you get those like big clusters. I think just because there's, you know, less like preservatives and stuff that go into this. So they just don't make the clusters because it's a much more simple kind of ingredients that you're putting into it than what they make in a factory. This is such a fancy stove and oven. So I'm gonna start it at 300 if you saw that, huh? So I have the oven at 300. I don't really wanna put it any higher because I don't want the granola to burn. It can burn pretty easily. So you wanna do it like kind of low and slow instead of really hot and super fast. Uh, probably 325 would probably be fine too, but just keep an eye on it. You don't want it to be at like 400 or anything because then everything will start on fire and you might burn your house down. So 300, nice and safe. Just keep an eye on it. It'll make your house smell amazing. Okay, so here's the granola. I put down some parchment paper so it doesn't stick to the tray too much. You just spread it out nice and evenly across. You don't want like too thick of a layer, so try to get it pretty flat and like evenly distributed into all the corners. So the granola is in the oven, one of the sheets, and you just have to keep a close eye on it, but it takes about, hmm, I don't know, 15 to 20 minutes to bake. But I would just, if it's the first time you've done it, just keep an eye on it just to make sure that it doesn't burn, because again, it burns really quickly, if it does. And uh, yeah, but I think, I think about 15 or 20 minutes, something like that. And then it should be a nice golden toasty brown, and it should smell nice. Yeah, basically. I don't know how else to tell if granola is done. I'm pretty sure it's just like, if it looks nice and toasted, basically. Hi, sticky cutie. Hi, sticky cutie. No. If you wanted to make like a little bit more of a savory granola too, you could probably put in turmeric and or chili powder, pepper, that kind of stuff. I don't exactly know if that would go very good with yogurt, but I don't know, might be something interesting to like play with. That might like, be kind of fun for a snack. I've seen also people do like puffed rice in it too, which would be an interesting texture. So again, girl, you can do anything. And if you just wanted to peruse down your uh, bulk section aisle of your grocery store and just see what's on sale, that might be a good way to do it too. And you could probably make granola out of that. So here's the first one out of the oven. I'm just going to let it sit and cool off for a while. And the other one's in the oven getting all toasted up. Yo, look how clustery this is. Turned out better than the first few times that I've made this. Oh my goodness. Yay, I like little clusters. That's very fun. <laughs> okay, so here's the first batch in a bag. I don't really know what else to store it in, so I always just put it in a bag. I'm sure you could put it in a jar or something like that too. It turned out really nice. After it's cooled off, obviously, you don't want to put hot granola in a bag because that would just not turn out the greatest. But yeah. That's what it looks like. You're like, 
it's a little loose. And then like not, not everything is in a cluster or anything like that, but it's super healthy and very nutritious and good for you. So here's a bag of granola. I gave another bag of quite a substantial amount to my brother, but basically most of it and that'll last me for quite a while. So I hope you enjoyed this video, everyone. I don't think it was super helpful in terms of the guidelines for my granola is super super loose and subjective to what you like so anyways i hope that i gave you some kind of a base to start your granola journey with and that you make some homemade granola and enjoy it i'm gonna have some of mine in yogurt right now hope everybody's staying safe and washing their hands and staying home and this is a really fun I guess fun kind of recipe <laughs> to make at home because it's really really easy it's super hard to mess up and you can make large quantities very fast which is awesome so anyways goodbye for now i'll make another video again soon bye